I want these younger kids to see that, like, just be you. And my whole little slogan is stay weird. So just find what, what's weird about you and love it. What's up, everyone? And welcome to another Birdies Conversation, where we talk about inspiring the next generation. Angel City has partnered with Birdies, yes, friends, our jersey sleeve sponsor, and the brand behind the most stylish and comfortable flats is back to lead with purpose on this talk series to discuss important topics to help women and all people rise up both personally and professionally. I'm your host, Fish, but I want to get straight into our guests. Diego Torres Caso is a program manager at ACFC Community Partner Las Photos Project. And if you don't already know about their work, he tells us all about it later on. Our next guest is Didi Hadacic, who you may know as our starting goalkeeper for ACFC and is an incredible photographer which created such synergy for this conversation. We had an incredible talk about their passion for elevating our youth, and we talked about recognizing your innate power, the challenges of social media, and you are all gonna want to go out and check out some dandelions after you listen in. I was honored to be a part of it, and I'm so stoked for you to hear it as well. So without further ado, enjoy. Didi, before you're on our roster, Diego and I met, <laughs> getting hyped about Angel City. Yeah. Um, and you were just starting to volunteer with Lost Photos mm -hmm. Project at that point. And now you have recently been promoted to the program manager, full-time gig. Like, what are you most excited about this new role? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think when I first started with the organization, right, I was volunteering with them. I was just mentoring and working with the students like one-to-one. -one. Now as a manager, I am overseeing every student, every teaching artist, like everyone that comes through our doors, I get to interact with. So I think I'm in a really unique position right now to kind of um, work with them. I get to really determine like who comes into our space and like what this space is gets to be. And I think as like a third generation Angelino, like I have such deep ties to so many corners of Los Angeles by my family just being here for so many years that I'm now in a position that an organization that up, uplifts women, uplifts uh, gender expansive youth. And those voices need so much right now that I love being able to now kind of spearhead like what conversations get to be had in that space, what partners we're um, going to be working with in the future and identifying like the shifts and trends in not just like what's what's trendy right now on the internet but like genuinely what our youth need what our families need what the culture needs and being able to use our space as a place to really open those doors for a lot of people um we're also based in boyle heights which is like a predominantly latino neighborhood predominantly low income neighborhood um so being a a, a hub for not just photography but for food justice like we're a really social um we're rooted in like social advocacy. So I think being in the program manager position now, I really get to set the tone for what the future of this organization will look like. I could not imagine a better human to be in that orchestrating role. <laughs> um, so, so excited for that. And Didi, what about you? You had an amazing 22 season. Um, couldn't have been better for our inaugural year. Our community loves you. Our Everyone about Angel City loves you. Um, that's a lot to carry into 2023. You know, what have you in this off season been reflecting on and what are you most looking forward to to bring in 2023? Well, I'm just going to say we have the best fans in the NWSL. <laughs> By far, I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, I think for me last year, it was, I was kind of in a new role slightly. Um, so I was trying to navigate that. And I feel like I picked it up towards like the middle and the end of the season. And then for this year, I think as a club, we had a great first year. And that's not like normal for the first kind of expansion team, first year for an expansion team. Um, so I think for us as a club to finish just outside the playoff mark and see what we were capable of, I think that's where I'm like excited. I'm like, we're, we built the brick we're now going to like build the house mm -hmm. and it's like mm -hmm. we're going from there and I'm excited to see kind of where that goes um so yeah as a club I'm excited about that from a personal standpoint it's just continuing to grow and continuing to know who I am and I also think that's what fans love that I am pretty authentic and I am very emotional on the field 
Um, but that's because I love the game and I love the passion. And if fans love me for that, then that's them accepting me for me. And mm. that I can't thank them enough for. So, yeah. Chills. Yeah. Oh, we're not even into the main discussion yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, again, thank you both. Like, I, we couldn't have better humans that I'm talking to right now to speak about this topic of inspiring the next generation. And that's with the passions for what you do and also, also the authenticity that you both live in. Um, but before we get to how you're having this impact, I think, you know, gratitude's always the place I like to start with anything. Um, so Dee, Dee, this is for you first. And is there a moment or experience that you can think of that just kind of like where you really felt like somebody showed up for you or inspired you um, on any of your dreams or goals? Um, yeah, I would say Brianna Scurry. Uh, when she was my assistant coach at Washington Spirit, she always had my back. Uh, and that is one person I respect and have a lot of love for. We don't talk every day, but it's like she has really impacted me and I know she'll always support me. Um, but then when it comes to impacts, it's always been my family. It's always been my mom. It's always been my dad. Um, and I know a lot of people, I've seen my post last year for the home opener that like my dad would be so proud of me, um, with him passing away in 2015, he would be so proud of how far I've come, the journey that I've had in this league. And that to me is like something I hold on to where every time I walk into BMO, I'm just like, dang. I made it this far and yeah, it's just always a special moment for me. I love that. And so much gratitude for everyone who's given you that love and support on this journey. Yeah. Cause we're grateful that you're here with us for sure. What about you, Diego? Who's been an influence in your life? Yeah. Um, definitely my grandfather. Uh, he was actually raised in Boyle Heights where now I'm working. Um, he was a community organizer. He was a political activist. Um, he was fighting for Latino rights before I was even born. And now I feel like I get to reap the benefits of the work that he laid out for me. Um, my family has really deep ties to a lot of the like Chicano movements that were happening in Los Angeles and he just really transformed the landscape of what like a Chicano, what a Latino in Los Angeles was capable of. Um, he came from a family that had no money. His father was deported back to Mexico at a really young age and he was able to make it to the White House. He served as a congressman for our country and was like wow. just this enormous pioneer in our community. And I think that I get, I, I was able to learn all of these things just hanging out with him at home. So I never viewed him as this like higher being or as anything like that. That was just my papa. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, like mm -hmm. he was just my grandfather. And it's now in my adulthood that I'm learning like uh, everything I'm able to do. I drive by a high school named after him every single day on my way into work. And it's just a reminder of who I am, where I come from who my family is and like the work that we have done collectively in, in, in Los Angeles to make it what it is today. And it, it honestly just pushes me every single day to like, keep going, keep working, doing this, not just for myself, but for everyone around me. Um, my grandfather has inspired me in so many ways. Um, he passed away early last year and I feel like same as you just mentioned, Didi, like I know he is so proud of everything that I'm continuing to do. Um, and when I get to drive by his school, I'm like, he's still like here cheering me on with me. So it's definitely like family is really, really important to me and like a huge part of my core value. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I love how for both of you, it's it's not like, it wasn't like a, I mean, Bryce Gray, definitely professional player, but it was more of how she showed up for you. Yeah. That inspired you, not who she was necessarily on the field mm. in her time. Um, and it's family, like those, Again, it's like the ordinary people are in our lives, but it's their extraordinary impact and just by the space they create with us and how they lead. So when you're creating spaces with, you know, youth, whether it's on the field with UDD or, you know, in the creative 
classroom for you, Diego. Um, what do you think it's important to bring to that space to like keep it open for this exchange of inspiration? Oh. <laughs> I, th I think for me, it's just like, I, I know it's kind of like a hard topic to like fully break down, but like being you and yeah. as you get older, you find who you are, you figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. But like, for me, it's, I want the, these younger kids to see that like, it's okay to cheer for yourself. It's okay. Cause you guys see me, I go crazy on the field. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm proud of it. I'm not ashamed about it because it's like, there's passion and it's 90 minutes. And if my teammate slides in and it's a great tackle, like I'm going to hype them up. Um, so for me, it's just like being your true authentic self being emotional because emotions are beautiful, being vulnerable, even in a very high stress demanding career. Um, just be you and my whole like little slogan thing is stay weird so just find what what's weird about you and love it <laughs> and self-love yeah love and i think when you bring that to a space like i know when i was a kid like seeing i could don't even remember some of the players that i like you know soccer camps you go to those and there's this one at clemson that i went to and i was like just her vibe was so cool because she was fully in her power now i mm -hmm. have language for it then I didn't, yeah. and it's 100% that she knew herself and she was like strong in it, and that in, like hit something within me that I couldn't even speak to at the moment. Yeah. Um, what about with you, Diego? What do you think is important, it, like the recipe to creating a space it, for that? It's honestly just what you said, power. I think showing young people that they carry so much power within them and it's okay to figure it out. Like you don't have to know it right now, but just know that you carry that. Um, something too that I love to like dissect and, and think about is like, we may have a 14 year old in our life who has a younger sibling or is an elder in their own right, but we don't look at them like elders. We only think of that being our grandparents or older adults, but this 11 year old might be an elder in her own way to a family or to people at school. They may look at her in that way. So I think recognizing that everyone's voice is so important and creating a space and like making sure that spaces really have that openness to understand that like collective knowledge is powerful no one has just because they may be older than you doesn't mean that they're in inherently right like you can still be right within your own thoughts as a young person um and i think that that's just so important to like teach this young generation to like not think like I shouldn't speak up because I might not know like no please speak up because your thoughts are just as important as someone who does know yeah and like for me it's like after games and we get to sign the autographs I do my best to make eye contact to yeah. ask these people questions um because I don't want it to be just like hey can you sign this cool I sign it I move on to the next person no it's like you came here to support us you came here to support the club the community and then obviously us as individuals um so if i could take two minutes out of a 95 minute game like i'm gonna give you that eye contact and just be like hey thanks for coming what position do you play what do you like and things like that mm, i think it goes back to what you all were saying about like presence and empathy like you bring that to each moment you are with anyone um whether it's youth or anyone our generation and above and that is that power that you have and you give um we talked on this a little bit it's tough right now in our world in many different ways um especially for this younger generation as they're navigating some of these really difficult times so from your experience with them or um any insights you've had around like what do you think is some of the biggest challenges right now that they're facing and um and how can we address them and diego we'll go to you first for this one yeah, I think um, it's really obvious to say social media, but like I, I grew up in a generation where social media was on the uprise. Now it's just like a standard. And I feel like what where, where issues lie with that is it's so easy to compare yourself to someone that you're just seeing through the internet versus being completely present with like just being in the moment and being with like friend groups 
here and there. And I think the internet has a lot of power and I'm not trying to diss it, but I definitely see that a lot of the youth that I am dealing with right now are dealing with a lot of like similar issues that we were dealing with, but like uh, heightened of like insecurity or self doubt. Um, these issues that I feel like are kind of perpetuated through social media, which is really unfortunate. Um, and also too, there's a sense of like, I think when I grew up, there was still this culture and I'm not to try to take away that that culture is gone, but like, I didn't know any LGBTQ people in front of me. I didn't know people like around me. Nowadays, there's a little bit more visibility with that. Like, and it comes at a cost because like, I can't even say that comfortably with the bills that are being passed right now and the trans bodies drag that is trying to be like, build against us and, and, and censored, you know? So it's, it's, it's hard to like, be like, it's, it's totally different now because we're still dealing with this, you know? And I, I think that that's also though an issue is that young people don't have a, like, it gets better moment because we're still dealing with so much legislation that is like trying to harm us, people that are trying to silence us. And like, as a young person, I feel like it's really harmful to only be seeing this like, still happening these these cycles that are still continuously happening like i just I, I know how exhausting it must be for them and i think that there's not enough recognition of the the, the flip side to that and I, I think that like finding that can be really hard for a lot of these young people to, in this day and age just wanted to say like i know we see a lot of this having especially right now but a, a fresh perspective that I got to see when I went to the CEO event that you all had at Lost Photos and um, seeing the family that's created there with those youth and you know all of the girls and uh, gender expansive youth like I would have loved to have a space like that when I was young. you know it's like yeah in the outer world like it's coming down hard for sure but the spaces that you all are intentionally creating like that's addressing these challenges that's creating that space for them to explore and feel safe and and feel like empowered um so i hope like you can also see that you are you are hope for them and who you are and what you're creating as well um so just wanted to say yeah. that because i was like i was so so proud I, walking in that space i appreciate that so much and i think that that's like that is the flip side of it is like these spaces are so important for young people, safe spaces for them, brave spaces for them, like communities where they can look around and forget about, and not even just forget, but be able to understand that like this can exist too. Like it's not just what you're reading through social media, which is all the terrible things that are happening. Like you also can, and I, I know it's like so silly to talk, but like you can go to an Angel City game and like the experience of the environment and the community that is there, that exists. Those people are real. Like we are all here experiencing this collective moment together. And like, I want more of that. I want young people to have more moments like that coming into spaces like Las Fotos Project, coming into community organizations that are working to like uplift and honor and, and, and react to what is happening out there, not just hearing it and seeing it, but actually taking initiative to stand up with our voices and with our power in the communities that we're in to, to really like show youth, like we see this, we're not blind to it, but also this is what we're gonna do about it. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. What about you, Didi? I know you had some thoughts around the challenges that our next generation is facing right now. Yeah, I, w I was gonna say, um... Well, first, I want to start off with the fact that we're still dealing with certain issues in 2023 is really sad. Um, and this is something I've been big on the gun violence. Um, and it's it breaks my heart every time I see something. Um, so I just hope the people in power do something for our younger generation. And that is safety. Um allow them the safetyness and safety net to be themselves allow them the safety to go to school and see each other every day um but i would say to kind of go off diego and the angel city it's like it's it's an event it's not even a sporting event it's like it's a massive outdoor party <laughs> um like with the fan fest and what we do it's like 
people are like, I'm going to an Angel City game. Yeah, that's just the other half of it. You have an entire first part, <laughs> like a pre-party yes. before the actual event. Um, so I think it's awesome. I haven't been able to walk through the fan fest. Uh, I would love to, but I've seen photos and I'm just like, the diverse community and who comes. And it's just like, you go from being strangers to being a community and to having similarities within each other. And I think that's what's so awesome to see. And you have one connection and that's football. That's playing the footy. And other than that, once you figure out we all love soccer, great. Then you find other things that you're all passionate about. So I just, I find that to be so awesome. It is. It's like, I call it a love fest because I feel it every time we are back together. Yes. And, um, and it's, like you said, it's the most diverse group of humans I've ever collectively experienced something with, um, especially in the game of football and like all ages and not just families, but our generation, older generations. Yeah. Like there's this group of women I see every time they're like in their seventies and they still play together and travel like all over the country. Um, and it's just like you said, it's so cool, the power of that. Back to the point of like creating those spaces for everyone to experience, but especially our youth to see where they can be, who they can be, be inspired by others, like our performers and our dancers. And we have yeah. you know, the mariachi band, and then we have our supporters and people in the front office and on the field. Um, and I think it's just so powerful because this whole industry wasn't here yeah. too long ago. Yeah. Um, you know, when we're talking about, you said this earlier about like a challenge of heightened self-doubt and confidence. Mm -hmm. And I know I've experienced it as a youth. I know, you know, it's a common thing to go through just on the journey of being a human. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how, how are you inspiring? How do you feel like you're helping, helping kids mm -hmm. feel themselves a little more feel their power you know Diego mm -hmm. we'll start with you like how you're talking about that of letting them know you don't have to have it figured out mm -hmm. but know it's there yeah yeah I think um the biggest thing that I I try to do is pretend like I wasn't in their position I think that mm -hmm. for some adults they like are so aloof and like oh well it was so different for me and I'm like I, I get it like I was once a closeted queer kid that like didn't know how my body moved I didn't know how to navigate spaces I didn't know how to use my voice like I once was so them and I think a big part of what like our our program and what like we try to do is mentorship working with young people and really like sitting down with them one-to-one -one, talking to them understanding what their interests are and then going out in the world and finding resources for them that align with the interests that they just naturally have like we're not trying to curate mm -hmm. someone to be whoever we want them to be but rather listening to what their needs are and then adapting and making space for them to exist as a, a as a young adult um but, but i really think that that's like a huge one is just like being able to relate to them and you know kind of understanding like i'm no different than you i'm just an older kid like i'm not oh. i'm not some adult that puts on a tie and goes into work. Like I, I try to treat my students and, and young people as a whole, the same way that I treat adults. It's with respect, it's with kindness. It's also like, if, if a young person says something that, well, let, let's talk about that, let's unpack that, you know, like not to shame them, but to understand where their point of view is coming from. Um, I think it's something that I, I definitely try to like talk to them and learn like, where is this doubt stemming from? And how can we like, how can I support you to get out of that situation, get out of that thought pattern, move into something that will help you break out of that as well? And I think it's just really listening to them. Man, that's so powerful because I feel like you're also teaching them how to do that for themselves of just that process of I'm in this space and just you talked about it earlier, active listening. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the questioning of just going deeper and exploring without judgment, without shame, and just exploring it with curiosity. Um, and then how to realign and what, what helps someone realign with themselves. So that's so powerful. I would have <laughs> benefited from that huge when I was yeah. any younger than 29. <laughs> yeah, and to add to that, um, it's like what Diego said earlier about social media. I think social media is massive when it comes to self-doubt. 
and just kind of not like a lack of confidence because it's like probably the number one cause of like it's comparison you're seeing this you're seeing mm -hmm. that um and i've been a culprit of it i'll put my hand up there have been days where i'm just like oh why did i look at that now i have self-doubt mm -hmm. um so i think social media is a big thing but when it comes to self-doubt and confidence I, I forgot who told me this but there's no one else on this planet like you that's going to do something the way you do. Yeah. And I think that's something I've held on to. And I'm just like, wait, you're right. No one plays the same way I play in a game. No one carries themselves the same way I carry myself. So I think that within itself is already powerful. That's your power. You have that and no one else has that. Um, so I think for me, it's holding on to that and being confident with the fact that I walk into this room because I'm the way I am. Um, and then another thing is something that I started doing, which was really hard. Every morning, I say three things in the mirror to myself of what I love about mm -hmm. myself. And at first it was hard and I felt a little weird doing it. But when you get to a point where you like smile back at yourself in the mirror and you're just like, dang, Dee Dee, you're really <laughs> cool. Like that's when it gets to a point where you've grasped this like inner power within yourself mm -hmm. and nobody's going to take that away from you. I love that. It is powerful. And it's not like, I think sometimes we can shy away. I know I, sometimes I shy away because it's like, I don't want to feed my ego. I'm not trying to like post myself up but it's not like you're saying it's empowering yourself and mm -hmm. recognizing your power yeah um and it's a relationship we have to build like it doesn't just you know we get disconnected in life um oh. and so it's so it's so important to make that space so i'm so happy that you work through the resistance and you're like <laughs> shouting yourself out every morning i'm gonna try that in my life now <laughs> i'm gonna go in my rear view mirror in the van and start just yeah. like, oh. <laughs> Um, all right. Inspiration, we know, is a very much an exchange of energy. It doesn't just flow one way. It comes back the other. So, Dee, Dee what is what are some ways to are the youth, any youth that you've interacted with or just youth as a whole have inspired you? I think they well, one, I think they inspire me every day. But my biggest thing is my sister has three little nuggets, I call them. <laughs> and the, the youngest one sometimes literally will pick up a flower and get so excited from a flower. And I get, I'm saying like, okay, hey, it's just a little flower. But it's like, what inspires me is she's so grateful for this dandelion. And I, meanwhile, I stress about, I don't know, it's just my career or things like that, where I am in the moment. And I'm just like, chill. We just got to live. And I think that's like last week I, or a few weeks ago, I had this like little realization where I was just like, I just celebrated my 30th birthday. It felt like, and in like two and a half weeks, I celebrate my 31st and I'm like, where did the time go? And I think that just hit me where, and what I feel little kids do better than adults, they're so present and they're so happy about the moment that they're in and i think that's something that inspires me about them every day mm, that curious curiosity yeah. and just like yeah 100 yeah. percent. i can get my head down too sometimes <laughs> and just like get in the mundane. yeah but um yeah more more stopping to look at dandelions for sure right <laughs> yes <laughs> what about you diego what are some moments or anything just general that um, has been inspired to you from this generation? Yeah, I think it's it's in similar vein. Like young people are sponges, and they're so willing to. I mean, like babies specifically, like they don't know. They come in, you know, as a full sponge, and just absorb, 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 absorb. And I think that as time goes on, I I, I notice that adults get in their own ways. They figure what works for them and they stick with what works for them. And I think young people are still students and they're still take on that role of being a learner. And I think that that is something that I get really inspired by from them is um, reminding myself, like, I'm always still learning. You know, I, I never think that I am, 
this or that or like too good for any sort of like time to still learn something and like acknowledge like yeah, I don't know that so like let me practice that skill or learn more about that topic and and I think that young people have this ability to remind me of that remind me that it's not so bad to not be an expert at something that it's okay that I can be a young adult and still learn and have that time to grow and make mistakes and grow with those mistakes um young people have I think a lot to offer and it goes back to what I said earlier I just think it's a matter of listening to them you know and I think a lot of times adults write off young people it's like oh they're just young they don't know but they're young and they do know you know, so like flipping the script and the language that we use with young people, it's it's really inspiring to just like listen to them and hear their thoughts, hear what they got to say. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like they may not know what we know, but they because they don't know, they're open to seeing other parts of it, mm. too, that we're missing because we're blind with our limited whatever we're, we've experienced. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been something I've really been trying to work on, too, of like using knowledge and experience to help inform when needed, but not put on walls of direction and images that I think things need to be in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Grateful for the youth for that. <laughs> Many other things, but yeah. those are two really powerful <laughs> ones. Um, Dee Dee, now with, you know, focusing on the game and how sports are evolving right now. I mean, it's just, you know, seeing how the Iowa women's game in the um, front or elite eight was more watched than a D or NBA game right now. Like yeah. that's insane. Yeah. That it's beautiful. Like it's not insane because yeah. we all knew it would happen when given the right resources, but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and so what role do you think now, like as this generation is rising up in this time where momentum is building in women's sports, um, what do you think their role is? Well, I think one, it shows what you're capable of. Um, so when you see a 15 year old or an 18 year old with Alyssa being signed, you see that it's possible. And I think that for me is an, another kind of drive that they should have where it's like, dang, she was 18 when she entered the NWSL, like that's huge. Um, but also the fact that they can do that shows that the women's game is growing. And with the right people, with the right investors, like you said, um, I've always been kind of, I think, I think the male industry will help pave the women's industry. Um, we are, we are in a male dominant kind of world. Um, and with the women's game growing, you see all the investors that we have. And I think it's, it's really cool. And when Alexis told me why he invested in Angel City, it was because he saw Olympia just running around in the house kicking a soccer ball. Like that, mm. that to me is powerful. Like he wanted that to one, invest in women's sports, but also he knows that what if my daughter ends up being on the US national team one day? Mm -hmm. So he's now paving the way for his daughter. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just think the, the more the game grows and you see these young faces and these young guns coming in, it's going to be a money market. And I think that's what's, it's always, it's going to be there. I think that's really powerful. Just the way you said about Alexis too. And like, because Olympia is playing soccer, because that's okay now for a young girl to be playing when that's something she's tossed to when she's tossed a doll no. that now that shifts his mindset. And then that ripple effect of her going on a pathway and him going on a pathway to support the same thing um, elevates it together. Um, and just when you're talking about seeing that it's possible, yeah, right? Like I believed in playing pro because I saw one person play, one woman play, and I thought it was possible. So just the impact of that, and if it's getting younger or just the development's getting better, um, the resources are stronger, then there's not that like limitating doubt too of like, oh, well, it hasn't been done. Right. So well, it's just going to be new trailblazers. It's, it's it's obviously it's the pay gap and i think that's where it's the biggest story where people are investing in women's sports because they want to change the pay gap between male and female athletes um mm -hmm. so i think that's kind of where it starts and i hope it continues to grow mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. i know my generation that's been in this league for 
between seven to 10 plus years, now that the league has been around, we've paved the way in order for us to get to this place. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if we can continue impacting the younger generation, the younger players that, that are in our league, they're going to continue to grow this league into what it needs to be. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Paving the way to then right. pave some more down the road. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what about you, Diego, when it comes to seeing how youth have grown and developed through their involvement with photography? How do you think that's going to influence this landscape? I, I think it's honestly, it, photography and like sport are so tied together. It's the same thing. Photography is a male dominated, white male dominated field. Um, and I think that as more women are shooting the covers of magazines, as we see more young people getting involved in photography, it'll change and diversify the landscape of what the industry is as a whole. Um, specifically the work, the, excuse me, specifically the youth that I get to work with, um, we are quite literally looking into the lives of 70 students that we're working with. It is so rare that we get to see a documented perspective of young people living in Los Angeles at the way that at the in the way that they are doing it, not through social media, not through a filtered lens, but just raw 500 images in one week, downloading those images and seeing what their life looks like. And I think that that is something so important is that we're teaching them photojournalism. We're teaching them self-awareness. We're teaching them commercial photography. We're doing all these things. But at the end of the day, we are just not silencing these young people. We're giving them a camera and showing them this is your voice. This is your perspective. You can't show us anything unless it's manipulated in Photoshop, which we encourage. But like, we don't try to tell <laughs> them what to photograph or what not to photograph. We just want them to exist and to like use their photography as an extension of their voice. And I think that is something that we're able to see within the field of photography developing is if we give more young people cameras and give more people that voice, inherently the top, topics and the conversations that we're having are going to shift because we're opening up who gets to talk and who gets to sh be a part of them. And I think mm -hmm. that letting young people photograph is, is such a way to just open up the field as a whole. And I use field and fields can be soccer fields can be a, a field of work. And I think it's just so interesting in the ways of which like when we allow young people in, when we allow different people in than we have in the past, what that effect has as a whole and what it'll have for the future. And I honestly think it's just a more diverse future. You allow them to be them through the camera. And I think that that's what's cool. And that's the one reason I got into photography was because it became a therapy session. It became a place where you can put unspoken words into still images. You can, it's, it's your eye, it's your perspective, like you said, Diego. And I think that's what's so cool about photography. Yes, it is subjective, but that's because it's your work. Like that's you, that's your art that you're producing. Man, well, I've felt it with your work, TD. I've gotten <laughs> to see both sides of it and appreciate it deeply um, and can resonate for sure with just how creativity allows you to have a little more self-awareness and be able to feel like you do have a voice and can share it with the world. Um, now, what advice, my friends, this is the, whether you're talking to your younger self, you're talking to the youth that you are working with or the youth that are listening to this right now, um, if they aspire to make a positive impact, which we know by being themselves, they will, um, what is your advice to them? Diego, I'll let you take this one first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, um, I honestly would say, learn the rules so you can break them. I think it's so important to understand the pioneers and the history. I think all of that is so, so, so important and valid. But at the end of the day, no change will happen if we keep doing things the way that we did nothing is going to continue to evolve if we keep it stale and i want young people to know that you can implement change you can take seats at the table you should be there and i, I just i 
I want young people to know that like, even though they are young, that their ideas, their thoughts, they all matter. And that is at the end of the day, all I want for any of the young people that I get to interact with or anyone that's watching is just to know that like, you matter. We want to hear from you. Find spaces and people that want the same for you as well. Yeah. Just echo that one. Dang. Echo that one. <laughs> yes. Um, I was going to say, don't let society transform you. Don't let society transform who you are. Because um, I think that's that's huge and that's hard. And then my other one would be cherish the little moments and the time that you have on this beautiful planet. Because in my experience, it has flown by and I don't know where time went, but it has flown by. Um, and my last one, your mm. path is your own path. Don't compare it to anyone else's. Yes. If you need to go at a turtle speed, you go at a turtle speed and that's all that matters. Yes. Man, I am so grateful for you both to be in existence and a part of what we do at Angel City in the major ways that you both are. Um, I've got hope after this conversation, for sure. <laughs> your ripples will be very powerful in all the ways that we... We'll not be able to track them, but I know they'll be felt throughout everyone. Um, just thank you both for being present and bringing your full selves to this conversation um, and just in everything you do. And I'm grateful you're making time to feed yourself, Diego yes. and Didi, for you to get to know yourself deeper yep. to heal in any ways. Um, how can we keep track of what you're doing? And is there anything that is on the horizon that you want us to want our audience to know about? Um, my Instagram is my biggest platform, kind of. Um, that's where most of my work goes. Um, photography is my side business. Fish, you and I are going to collab eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but Be yeah, on the lookout for that. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't told people about my prints being launched. I will be launching a good chunk of my prints oh. finally. Um, I'm yes. waiting. I don't know why I've been waiting. It's just a big step for me. Um, yes. So, but I'm excited about it. And then in general, I'm just excited for this 2023 season. I think we're going to do some good things as a club. So, yeah. Mm, definitely check out those prints, everyone, when you see them drop. Okay. Um, I know she's just building up the suspense for us. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. So it's, come on. It's working. It's been centuries. <laughs> it's been way too long. I've been waiting. I've been very aware that they're dropping and waiting patiently. <laughs> what about you, Diego? What's going on? Yeah. What's going on on the horizon for you? Yeah, Let's Let's this Project. Um, you can follow us on Instagram. Also, our photographers are at every Angel City game, so you can always check out. Mm -hmm. If you see young people with the camera, they are probably with Let's this Project. Um, so yeah, ch check out that. And then I think on, on a personal note, like yeah, I'm continuing to work there and also just like on the side collaborate with other artists and other people that are like-minded as me and just working together to make some rad stuff you know i think that art is super mm -hmm. endless and the ideas are always flowing with other people so just like getting in more spaces to have different conversations and find like-minded folks to really like work with and, and collaborate on a deep level um so yeah that's definitely what I'm, i'll be up to right now I think I'm going to be starting a group text with this, yeah. these three after this message. After I heard that, That's I was like, creative. Hmm, I, yes. I got some ideas. <laughs> um, well, again, just thank you both so, so, so much. Uh, such a joy to have this conversation with you and um, to continue just to share your light as you continue to share it in your own lives. But we do have to end it, unfortunately. But you'll be back. Yes. I have a feeling we're going to have a return of this. Probably. Sure.